Hi, welcome to Know It Ollie Eli 5's Cellar Boxing. Now, cellar boxing is something that's come up in the last few months that turns out is a technique used by a large number of hedge funds and financial institutions. It's an infinite money glitch, essentially. One of the worst perpetrators of this particular method is Amazon, Jeff Bezos. He used to work for hedge funds, and now he uses that knowledge and his hedge fund friends to sell a box his competition so that he can buy them up and take all their patents and ideas. So, how does one go about sell a boxing, and what is it exactly? Known and reported in the early 2004, I will quickly pull up this article from Superstonk. This is in 2004. This guy goes over the fact that they found an article from 2004 describing exactly how companies do this method called seller boxing. And then you start to look and you realize Sears, Toys R Us, and a number of other companies have suffered this exact fate. And you can go and see step by step the destruction of the company. So how does this work? This is as simplified as I can get, so there's some technicalities that are being smoothed over here. Don't forget that. So, item number one, you put some goons on the board. Some people that belong to you, you put them onto the board of directors so that they can start pushing the company in the direction you want to go. You have the goons make some business decisions that maybe backfire or some upgrades that never actually get completed, essentially waste money. Once you've wasted some money and an earnings report comes out, a hedge fund owned media company will be used to spread false information. And what do I mean? A hedge fund owned? Isn't that market manipulation? Well, MarketWatch is part of a dozen companies in, under one umbrella that are tied to the Dow Jones hedge fund. Do you think they're putting out information that is going to benefit their readers or their investors? Another one is The Motley Fool. You should just don't even look at The Motley Fool. Don't, don't talk about it. Don't look at it. Don't acknowledge it. They are first and foremost a hedge fund, and they have a media outlet of the same name. If you check The Motley Fool's recommendations for the last year, I saw an article where someone actually went and got the information. I've been hunting for it, but I can't find it again. It was around 90% of their recommendations had finished the year in the red, completely in the red, or it was within a month, pretty much everything they recommended had turned red because they're trying to make money for their investors, not for their readers. So just so you know, almost every single media outlet that does financial news is tied to a hedge fund that makes money. Anyhow, you put out all this FUD. Uh, Fear, uncertainty, and doubt about the company because they're losing money. You then take the hedge funds and you short the ever living out of the stock. What shorting does, naked shorting does, is it puts synthetic or pretend shares into the market that act like real shares. And when that many shares get flooded into the market, it is, mar it is dilution, which drops the price. And guess what? The price go down. Get more media coverage on the price decline. Scare people. Get them to freak out and sell their positions, especially if it's at a loss. Continue crushing the price so low that the company cannot maintain their debt load. A company's market cap is often used to judge how much money they can borrow from the banks. If you have 100 shares that are a dollar a share, then your market cap is $100. But if someone naked shorts 1,000 shares into the market, they might completely crush your price down to 10 cents. But <clears throat> even though there's 1,100 shares in the market, you're still only having your market cap calculated on the number of official shares that exist, and so your market cap is tiny compared to what it should be. Therefore, you can't borrow money against your share price because it's been destroyed illegally with fake shares. And so that is why a company goes into debt is because they can't refinance because the financing companies decide that their company isn't worth enough to finance because their stock price is down. Even though if you looked at all the shares and you checked that price, 
you'd realize that the market cap of some of these companies hasn't gone down. It's just the stock price has been diluted. They keep crushing the price. The point is to send it into the decimal places of a cent, a thousandth of a cent or less. When you get to this point, you become a penny stock and you will be delisted and your company might have to file for bankruptcy because you've been removed from the major stock exchanges. What happens once they go into bankruptcy is that the goons will then go and take all the patents and all the copyrighted materials and all the research and data that those companies have accumulated. They will take it for themselves and they will pass it on to whoever they see fit or they will sell it on to the highest bidder. Now, if you have those shares that you that were tied to one of those companies, you should probably have held on to those because in the bank bankruptcy filings, you can actually get money back from those shares, especially if it turns out that the stock was massively diluted. Then if you show up with a share, you can actually get what that share's worth was potentially back from the company rather than just having it vanish. If you gave it to your broker or let it vanish from your account, then just know your broker probably took that money. Step number 10 is after the company's filed for bankruptcy, the goons have taken the patents and the materials, they never have to buy the stock back, which means that they can naked short until the company's dead, and they never have to fulfill the backside of the contract where they have to buy the, the stock back because it's in bankruptcy. So if you never buy those stock back, you never realize any gains. They are unrealized gains, and so you never have to pay taxes on them. This is an infinite money glitch that is kind of an issue. It's not the best. It's something that's being done very regularly in the markets. And it probably most definitely needs to stop. We've had too many companies absolutely destroyed. If you look at all the companies that Amazon now has under its umbrella, you will notice that this exact method has been used on the vast majority of them so that Amazon could buy them out and go about its way with a whole lot more income. So if you'd like to know how this relates to GameStop and how this was attempted on GameStop and where that puts us now, go and check out the Seller Boxing and GameStop video that I have put out. I will directly tie what's happened here to GameStop. Spoiler. They failed. They tried. And they went so far down this list. They went they were between six and seven. They were trying they were at step six and a half. And all of a sudden the plan got derailed and it has led to idiosyncratic risk of one particular GameStop in the markets. So if you'd like to know all the details on that, check out that other video. If you want links to seller boxing and more data and information, check out the link in the description that will take you to the show notes and a list of a large number of links where you can do more reading. Know it Ollie out.